Hey guys, so by now you may know I love playing around with Cinema 4D's camera calibrator to give us the ability to play with photos and really bring them to life. I wanted to take it a step further for you guys and give you a technique using the collision deformer to get some really nice fluid motion. This is a fun little setup and will give us some really nice results. Let's jump in, see how it comes together. Let's get straight into this one and start having a bit of a play with the collision deformer. All right, I think the easiest way to demonstrate this before we dive in and start having a look at the camera calibrator, I just wanna show you how the collision deformer actually works. So I'm gonna drop a plane into my scene, grab a collision deformer from our effectors tab and drop that as a child to our plane. And what you're gonna notice in this collision deformer, we've got some various tabs. And what we're gonna focus on right now is the colliders tab. So what I'll do is add a sphere into my scene and we're gonna use this sphere to collide with our plane. So let's come back to our colliders tab and this is where we're gonna feed in that sphere into this objects field. And what's great now is when I change my Y position of our sphere, we start to collide with that plane thanks to this tag. And what I love is in the collision tag here, we've got some various settings. Now what I love about this collider section is we've got different ways that we can solve it. Now first we had intersect. So what intersect is gonna do is when we meet the midway point of our object, the collision will invert and start to push it from the other side. So it's not quite what we wanna do. We're actually gonna focus on the inside and the outside solvers. As a little test here, let's drop our sphere beneath our frame and we'll add a keyframe at frame zero. I'll then come forward 30 frames, one second in our timeline, lift our sphere up so it goes beyond the threshold and we'll add another keyframe. All right, this is a start. We've now got our sphere colliding with our plane and passing through it. But what we really wanna try and achieve is that nice fluid motion of our plane as it settles back to its initial state. So how are we gonna do that? What we're gonna do is combine our collision tag with a jiggle tag. So what we're gonna do is add a jiggle to our plane, but placing it beneath our collision tag in our hierarchy. And you can see instantly just by using our default settings as our sphere comes passing through our plane, we're getting some really nice fluid motion as it settles back to its initial state. Now in the jiggle tag, we've got full control over these object properties. We can increase our drag, which will slow down that spring. We can stiffen this up a little bit so it's not as bouncy. This is where you really start to dial in that look you're going for. Something else I encourage you to have a play with is using fall off within the jiggle effector. One that I think works really nicely, especially with something like this where you're passing through an object, is to use a spherical fall off. And what you can do is just resize this accordingly. And what this allows you to do is limit that jiggle so it doesn't actually affect the edges as well. All right, this is the basis of how we're gonna achieve the final look. So let's jump over to this scene that I prepared earlier and we'll start to break it down and see how I build that initial animation. All right, let's have a look at recreating that animation you saw at the start. So I've got this great shot of a basketball court that I got off PX here and I'll pop a link down in the description below and you guys can go and pick that up and recreate this and recreate this exact scene if you'd like to. So what we're gonna do is set up a camera projection to project this image back onto geometry. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is position our camera to about the same position we would think this photo would have been taken from. So let's have a look at doing that. I'm just gonna drop a plane into my scene so we've got something to look at as we're moving around this scene. And we can have another look at that photo to sort of see whereabouts we wanna be with our camera. And I think maybe about, I think somewhere about there is gonna be good to start with. So let's add a camera into our scene, come over to our tags, Cinema 4D tags, and we're gonna add a camera calibrator. Now we're gonna to wanna to come to our image tab, load up our images and feed in that image we've been looking at. So by clicking off that camera calibrator tag, it'll allow us to see our plane again. And we probably haven't quite got it in a position we're happy with yet, but we'll fix that up in just a second. So we're gonna come over to the calibrate tag and click on create camera mapping tag and create background object. Great, now that's added a background object into our scene as well as creating a texture tag which has been applied to our camera. So what we're gonna do now is look through our camera and just reposition this slightly. We wanna try and position it so it looks like our plane is taking up the same position as the basketball court. Now what I'm thinking here, we might even need to change the focal length on our camera to get this shot, to be able to get this angle. So let's try something like 80 mil here. And we'll just zoom out. No, perhaps a 
perhaps the other way, maybe a tighter lens. So you can see I'm just repositioning my camera here, trying to get it looking, trying to get it looking similar to a basketball court. And I think about there is looking, and I think about there is looking right. So what I'm going to do is with my plane selected, hit Alt G, and that's going to group it. And then by holding down Command, I'm going to select that tag from our camera and apply it to our null as well. And what that's going to do is project that geometry onto our plane. All right, this is starting to look pretty good. I'm happy with I'm happy with the angle of our plane to capture our ground there. So what we can do now is just reposition this back to the center. And I'm just going to scale this out. I'm just going to scale this so it captures our entire image. I'm going to hit MB to reveal our polygons. And for this, we're going to need to add more width and height segments. So I think perhaps, I think 80 is going to work for us for now. So if I jump out of our camera projection tag and hit NA to hide our polygons again, you're going to see how that image is being projected onto our plane there. So what we're going to focus on now is just recreating a simple version of these basketball rings. So first up, let's have a look at making this pole. I think a simple cylinder is going to work nicely for this. Let's reposition it. Let's reposition it slightly there. Scale down its width. And what I'm focusing on here is just the base point to start with. Hitting T for scale and just scaling it down a bit. Move it over a little bit to scale it down, maybe a little bit more. I'm now happy with the radius of it. I think that's looking pretty good. And we'll tweak the height in just a second. Let's drop this cylinder into our null as well. And what that's going to allow us to do is project that image onto the cylinder as well. Let's zoom in. And I think we just need to move our cylinder over a little bit. And look at that. We're starting to capture that image. And that's looking all right for now. We can pull this up. We want to see how far. I'm just going to continue pulling this along Y to see where to see where the top of that pole is. You can see in the original image, there's that little white highlight on the top of this pole. So that's what I'm looking for as I'm just pulling this up. And you can see we're starting to now see the top of that highlight. I think what we might even need to do to capture this correctly is just rotate our cylinder a little bit. Let's do that and then move it back over. Maybe rotate it just a little bit more. Look, this doesn't need to be perfect by any means. The only reason we're recreating these is to get some reflections back into any objects that we introduce into this scene. Now if I jump back into my camera, we can now see that cylinder is capturing that pole and this is starting to look good. Jump back out of our camera for a second and we'll just use this same cylinder and I'm just gonna make a copy of this cylinder and rotate it and just rotate it 90 degrees. We can then pull this up till we see that other main pole intersect with it. It looks like it's about there. We can then shorten the height of our pole here, pull it along until we see. So we might need to give it a little bit more height. There we go. I think that's looking good. We've now we've now captured that second pole. All right, the last thing we're going to focus on, we're not going to worry about any more of the poles, just these two and the main shape of our basketball ring. So let's let's add a cube into our scene, and I'm going to drop this as a child of one of our cylinders. I'm then going to click. Shift C, and then type reset PSR. And what this is gonna do is reset that cube's PSR, position scale and rotation to our cylinder. We're gonna pull this back out of this hierarchy for the moment. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is scale this down quite a bit. And what we're gonna, and what we're trying to do here is recreate the shape of that basketball ring. We can then drop that into the null and see, okay, we're gonna to need to make this a little bit shorter. Pull this up a bit. Maybe it's not quite as wide. And there we go, we're now projecting, we're now projecting that image onto these simple shapes as well. So the way we're gonna so the way we're gonna pull off this final look is layering up a few different projections within this scene. So this is a reference to the original source image with all the people that were all masked out. And you're going to notice as I zoom into this basketball ring, I've also masked out those, those poles that are joined with, with the basketball ring. And I'll show you why we're going to do this now. If we jump back into our scene, you're going to notice the projection is also projecting those poles onto our backboard. And that's not, and that's not quite what we want for this shot. So what I'm actually going to do is grab both my cylinders and my cube and group them. I can then rename this basketball rings. 
and make another copy of that texture tag onto these basketball rings. So with that texture tag selected, it's gonna highlight which one it is in our material palette. So I'm gonna select that and make a copy of it in our scene. I'll then double click on it, come to our luminance channel where it's feeding in that image. And I'm gonna replace it with this rings photo that's got those bars masked out. And then what I'm gonna do is use this texture tag to override the one that's already on our basketball rings. And by doing that, we're now projecting this new image onto these basketball rings. All right, nice, this is a good start for us. Let's make a copy of these basketball rings. I'm gonna rotate them 180 degrees and I'm gonna reposition this where our other ring is. So I just need to slide it over a little bit. Maybe we just need to scale down our backboard a little bit. And nice, we're now created geometry for our second ring to project onto as well. All right, our scene's starting to look good. We've got a couple of rings set up. We've got a couple of rings set up, but you're gonna notice as I move around this scene, those basketball rings are also being projected onto the court as well, and that's not quite what we want. So just as we fix up those bars being projected onto our first backboard, Let's do the same for our basketball court. So with our plane selected, let's do that same thing. Let's copy that texture tag and apply it to our plane. We can then make another copy of that material. And we're gonna replace this image with another shot where I've masked out everything apart from the court. Let's open that up and use that to override that material. And perfect, we've now got a nice clean court. Those, those bus rings are no longer being projected onto it as well. All right, let's jump back into our camera. Now that we've got this, now that we've got this little scene set up, let's start having a bit of a play with of how we incorporate that nice fluid motion. First things first, let's add a sphere into our scene. Maybe we'll scale it up just a little bit. All right, that's looking good. Now what we want is for this sphere to collide with this basketball court be really fluid and bouncy and then roll off and then roll off through the image. So how are we gonna set that up? So we've got our plane here. Let's add a collision object to our plane just like we did before. And in our colliders, we're gonna add this sphere. Now you're gonna notice one thing as I start to move my sphere, as I start to move my sphere's position, it doesn't appear to be actually colliding with our plane, although it in fact is. And the reason for this is our camera is projecting our image perfectly onto our geometry, no, no matter of its position. This is one more step we have to take before we, can, before we can really make this effect work. So I'm gonna turn off my collision tag for a second, select my plane and make it editable. I'm then gonna select my texture tag, right click on it and generate UVW coordinates. Do we want these sub objects to be included? I'm gonna say no. And what this has now done is now stuck that image onto our geometry. So when I now turn back on our collision, we now start to see the look of our sphere interacting with this plane. All right, so this is starting to look good. We've now got our plane colliding with our basketball court. So if we come over to our collision, we can see we've got our solver set to intersect. And what we're actually gonna want for this look is to set it to outside. Perfect, so now, so now we're really stretchy from above by pushing down with our sphere. So in that final look, we had this dynamic sphere dropping from the sky, bouncing into this really cushiony ground and then rolling off the scene. So before we do that, let's add a jiggle, also add a jiggle into our plane to get that nice fluid motion. So with our sphere selected, let's right click, come to our simulation tags and add a rigid body. We can then just pull this up out of our scene. Hit play and have a look what happens. Our sphere drops from the sky, collides with our ground, but it doesn't stop there. Now this in itself is a kind of a cool look, but this isn't what we're going for. So let's pause that for a second. Now if we just added a dynamic body to our plane because it'll cancel out that collision. So what we're gonna do is make a copy of our plane, delete both the collision and jiggle from it. I'm gonna jump out of my camera for a second so you can see what we're doing. Turn off my background object that we created. So you can see we've got our original plane where our image has been projected and we've got this second plane as well. We can delete the texture tag from it. And all I'm gonna do is move our plane down 100 units in Y. So you can see what we've got here is just those two simple planes set up. 
Now, if I jump back into my camera with the new plane selected, we can come over to our simulation tags and add a collider body. Now, let's have a look at that. The sphere now drops from the sky, collides with our plane, but now we get this nice dynamic bounce and it rests on the court. We can hide that plane that we created just so we don't see it in case, it, in case our collision passes through it. And what we can do is just move this down if we wanted a more bouncy surface. All right, this is looking good. We've got some nice jiggle. Perhaps we could even give our sphere a little bit more bounce. We get a bit more height as it hits the ground. All right, this is starting to look good. Now, all we need to do to finish this off to make it roll off our scene, let's just pause this for a second, come back to frame zero. I'm going to come over to my simulation tag, come down to particles and just add a wind. What we can do is just rotate this wind so it's pointing off our scene. I think that's the right way. Yep. Hit play. And now that sphere bounces into our scene and that wind is capturing it and blowing it off the scene. Perhaps we, want, we might even want to rotate this a little bit so it goes more down to the bottom corner. There we go. Let's just add a few extra frames to our scene so we can see this entire loop. And there we have it. This nice dynamic fluid animation of this sphere bouncing into this court before rolling off the scene. We're getting this really nice cushion look in our basketball court and, and it's a bit of fun to set up. I hope you like this setup. I hope you take something away from it. Really push those collision objects and layer them up with different, different object effectors and you can get some really cool looks and it's a lot of fun to play with. Really simple setups, but ultimately creating some really cool looks. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.